In this Autodesk Maya tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can quickly set up a fluid simulation using Bifrost Fluids in Maya. To get started, open up a new scene in Maya, then on the Poly Modeling shelf, select any kind of polygon that we're going to use as a fluid emitter. In order to use fluids in Maya, you need to make sure you have the Bifrost Fluids plugin installed. Just go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, then type BI. You should see Auto Load and Loaded checked for all of the Bifrost Fluid plugins. Once you're sure you have all the Bifrost Fluid plugins installed in Maya, select the mesh, then in the top left, select Effects. This will show you the Bifrost Fluids plugin menu option. Select Bifrost Fluids and then select Create Liquid. This automatically sets up everything you need to have an emitter and the simulation container for a Bifrost Fluid in Maya. If I click play in the timeline, you likely won't see anything even though it is simulating. That's because the points that are being displayed are way too small. Go back to frame one, over in the outliner, click the plus icon next to Bifrost Liquid 1, then click Liquid 1. We can change the point size. Then if I press play, we'll see that fluid has dropped through but it only drops once. So now what we need to do is select Bifrost Emitter Props 1. This is the properties for the emitter. And if I select Continuous Emission in the Attribute Editor on the right, now the Bifrost Fluid will emit particles continuously. If I press play, we can see that the particles continuously emit. Now we want the particles to interact with something. We need to add a mesh. In the Poly Modeling Shelf, if I click a cube, then press W to move the cube down, then I can press R to scale the cube. If I right click into face mode, select the top face, press Control E or Command E to extrude, select this cube, then select the middle cube, press G to repeat the extrude, put that down, then right click to go to object mode, press R to scale and scale the object out. Now we have a container for our fluid. If we go back to frame one and press play, all the fluid will drop right through the object. That's because we have not told Maya that we want the fluid to collide with this container. Go back to the first frame. Make sure you're in object mode. Press Q for the arrow. Select the mesh, then hold Shift and select the container for the simulation. In Bifrost Fluids, select Collider. Now this will collide with the fluid in the Bifrost simulation. Go ahead and press Play. And now you can see all of the fluid spilling into the container and colliding. In order to render this and see anything, if we click on the Arnold tab and open up the Arnold render view, and then click play, we won't see anything because we need to add an Arnold sky dome light. We can dock the render view by holding the mouse button on the top part and dragging until we see the blue bar. Then adjust your windows until they're the right size. This way you have the render view handy when you need it. If I click on the Arnold shelf, then select Sky Dome, then click Play on the render view, you can see that now we see all of the water splashing around in our simulation. It is also colliding with this object. Now we can change different attributes, such as animating this emitter. If I go back to frame one, and then I select W, I can move the emitter up a little bit out of screen. Press S to set a keyframe, move forward a few frames, move the ball, S to set a keyframe, move forward, then move the ball again, S to set a keyframe, move forward a bit more, S to set a keyframe. Now if I go back to the very beginning and I press play, we can see that the ball and the emitter move together. If I press play in the render view, we can see the fluid rendered. If you want the simulation to be more accurate, Click on Bifrost Liquid 1, then click on Bifrost Liquid Properties Container, and we can look at the different attributes here. For the master voxel size, this will control the resolution used for the simulation. So if you use lower values, it'll make more detail, but it'll take more compute time. So we can go ahead and make this 0.2. Then the same thing down in Transport Step Adaptivity. So this is how many iterations are used to calculate the particles. If we 
increase this value, then there'll be more simulation. We can also increase time step adaptivity. We'll do this 0.3, and now the simulation will be more accurate. As you can see, there's a lot more particle density. If I press stop and then play on the Arnold Render View, you can see that we have much more splashing and frothing. When you finally get your render and you have everything right, you really want to crank up the density and get a nice render. So we can come up here to the master voxel size and really decrease this size to something like 0, 1. Then if we go back to the beginning and we press play, this will have lots of particles and our simulation will be more spectacular. If I pause and then render, you can see already it's starting to become more interesting. If you want to change the color of the liquid, you need to click on the liquid right here, then come over in your attribute editor and go over to the far right, you'll see AI standard surface. Then you can come down to the transmission and you'll see the two colors for the liquid. Notice that this is the darker color for the scattering of the light. So if I change this color, let's say I want to have some sort of green liquid, I could have a light green here and then change this color to a darker green. And now we have green liquid. If you want it to be a more opaque green liquid, we can have it just be darker here for the translucency. So that means it's a more opaque liquid. And we would do the same thing down here to really make it a bit deeper. There are some presets. So for example, if I click on preset and then I select deep water, this will reset it back to the defaults that you had. So hopefully this allows you to get started quickly with Bifrost fluids in Maya. Happy 3D modeling.